Hello friends! Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel. It's Serena here. And today you're probably wondering what this all has to do with watercolors. Well, it is spring. It's a cool spring day. Uh, it's in the 50s today and it's been cool for a long time, which is nice because we've had a nice long season for spring flowers. But we've also had a nice long season for spring trees. And for some reason, this year, more than others, I have seen more different colors and subtleties in the buds and the early leaves on the trees as I drive by. I didn't want to let that pass me by, so I went out with my pruners and I got some samples of foliage but I'm also wanting to swatch some colors from memory because some of the trees have already turned from that really pale yellowish bud break stage to the green. They're not dark green yet, but they're a light green. So I wanted to capture that in my uh, journal, my watercolor journal, before they went by. So join me today, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use my... A new Roman Schmall palette that I've swatched out and I'm going to put these swatches kind of loosely in a, uh, I have a Bao Hong journal here, watercolor journal that I've already started. I'm going to go ahead and swatch these colors out on the paper here. So join me today for some spring painting fun. I wanted to take a moment to show you what has happened with the smoke that we're getting in the Northeast uh, that is coming down from Canada. All day yesterday afternoon we had an orange cast to the... Those are the hummingbirds. <laughs> Sorry about that. All day yesterday we had an orange cast to the sun and it reflected orange off the car windows, uh, the anywhere where the sun cast a, cast a, uh, a light rays, it was a yellowish orangish tinge. Uh, it's kind of eerie, almost like a um, an eclipse. Uh, but the sky is very hazy. I'll take you over to the pond and you'll see what I mean by that. Now, this normally would cause a lot of rain, this kind of sky. You would think it would be pouring rain and we really desperately need the rain. But this is all the, uh, all the smoke coming down from Canada. And they said there's something like 240 some odd fires burning at the same time. So it's quite a scary thing and uh, even more desperate for our neighbors up north. Here is my building site so far. Uh, you can't see anything because it's covered. It was covered overnight uh, as I cover it every night as I'm working on it. It's slow going, but it is going. Um, I'm hoping to be able to uncover it and work on it some more today. I wanted to get this whole platform finished today so I could start on the walls, but uh, I'm not quite ready yet. It's just taking me a longer time not knowing anything about building and not having a helper. Uh, it's just it's very time consuming going back and forth and doing everything myself. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'll get there. One thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is asking for help and asking for help when you need it. You know, everybody jokes about guys not wanting to stop to get directions, but all winter long, I, I was researching how to do this studio, how to build this studio, and I was stressing out over the fact that my local big box store, the one that's closest to me, which is like 45 minutes away, uh, wanted more than a hundred dollars 
for delivery fee. I have no pickup truck, so I would have to rely on that. And I was stressing out because I thought I had to figure out all the supplies I needed at once to avoid having double delivery fees. Now, I didn't even know where I would put everything from start to finish on a build like this. And I mentioned it to my husband and he said, well, why don't you use XYZ, this is another local company, I thought was really tiny and I thought wouldn't be able to handle the job. But I went down there and I talked to the guy and you know, they were very friendly. He's willing to do deliveries when he's in the area and not charge me too much extra, you know, just a, a small little fee. Uh, we got black flies here. Uh, so it's black fly season, it's a little bit buggy. But um, all that stressing out I was doing for nothing and a solution came just because I asked for help. And you know, we have to ask for help when we need it. I, I don't know what it is, if it's just me, leave me a comment below and tell me, is it just me? Is it something I'm doing? Or do you find yourself doing that too? But I, I just thought it was strange that, you know, one little question removed all that stress off of me. And now I can complete or continue with my build, my studio build, little by little as needed. And it's not so overwhelming. So just the thought for the day today. Uh, now on to something more fun. All right, so I do have a swatch sheet here of the colors that I did earlier. And I'm going to keep that down. Well, I'll have to keep it up here handy so I can see what colors I've got. But I'm also going to open up my uh, sketchbook here and get to a separate page. I really don't like these landscape format pages. They're just too, too wide. But for my purpose today, I just want to get the colors down and see if I can match them so I don't forget what they actually look like. All right, so I'm taking just a small Jackson's number four icon series S700 paintbrush and I want to start with some of the lighter greens that I remember and I remember the greens being almost almost yellow so I'm going to start with the lemon yellow here and I'm just going to mix a little bit here now it's not going to be just lemon yellow of course there's going to be a little green in it um, and I could actually use that spring green to kind of darken it down a little but some of these were almost this color green almost that color like just a little bit off yellow a little bit more green on there that might be too green oh I went too green so you have to be very careful you can't go too green too fast so I'm going to start that again and one thing I do want to impress upon everybody is sometimes things are fleeting like the colors on the trees and you have to take time to actually stop what you're doing and that's pretty close stop what you're doing and actually go out or get a sample or get a get a reference whatever it is that you're doing before it goes by you know grab that take advantage of it because once it's gone you're not going to see it again and that's going to be it now i can use this one also there's a falcon or a hawk or something flying by up above that one is another nice color a little bit deeper i need it but that's okay that was that green that i used and i can actually go a step further and use pure green which you know, you don't really like to use greens out of the tube. That's a little bit too bright. I've got to dull that down with something because that's definitely not a color that I've seen. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of red. It's be a little dangerous here. I don't want to do it too much because then I'll make it too, too muddy. I don't want it too muddy. Just a little bit dulled down. See like that? I just dulled it down a little bit. See? See, it's not quite as bright. A little bit more. There we go. 
it is that kind of value, but not that color. If that makes sense. Let's get some more of that on there. I like this Baohong paper. It's uh, got a nice, nice sizing to it. All right, and then, of course, we've got all these colors. I want you to take a look at some of these. Of course, these are a little wilted, but you can see how the very new leaves still have that little tinge of red in them. It's like a reddish brown. So they've gone from, like, really spring greens to a reddish brown. And then you can even see some other foliage. Sorry about that. I picked these a little bit while ago. Um, this has a very light green to it. And I can show you the contrast between the light green and the, let's see if we can find one here. It's hard to see that, but these, these colors at the base, you see the color at the base there in my left hand, left hand, uh, how that's a deep green already, but they come out a very light green. So you have two colors or more on each stem. And this one, you even see how if you're looking, oh, I'm getting this all over the place, if you're getting a lot of that reddish in the top of the stem, but you also see this from far away. Look at those beautiful, these are called winged samaras. It's the fruiting uh, body of the tree, and these will make little seeds a little further on, you know, down the line. But uh, these winged samaras are red-tipped, and they are going to lend an overall red tinge or ruddy tinge to the tree itself. Now that I've made a mess on my palette, let me see if I can blow it off real quickly without making too much of a mess here. But let's continue on. Now you see how I've, how I've gotten three nice colors so far. Now let's get a little deeper into some of the colors. And I'll use this as a base. But I'm going to add some darker green to it. And I think I'm going to go with the... Let's see which one I'm going to go with. Almost the olive green. I, I want it a little muddy. I don't want it too bright. If I go with the... Almost like that Kelly green there, it's going to be too bright. Let's see, I'm going to test it out here. So that's just subtly a little bit more of a darker color. Not much, just a little bit. And all I want to do is capture the colors of spring. I'm going to go a little further on that, get a little bit more in there, and it's going to change all the way down the line as I add more of that olive to it. So I've got that. Now I'm going to go for a little more of a greenish tinge. So I'm actually going to take this Kelly kind of green and add some more to that. Just to see how many different kinds of greens I can make. And this is just right, just mixing the ones right out of the tube. It's not really doing very much to them. But I want to get a good mixture, some good ideas of the foliages I've seen. Now, I have seen some more in the bluish range, so I'm going to add, oh, let's see, what am I going to add to make it a little more bluish, like the ones I showed you from this plant here, where it's a little darker, it's almost brown, I'm almost, almost getting into the browns here, but let me go ahead, it's got to be kind of a warmer color. I'm going to play around and add, I'm going to add a teal. And you know, you can play with these things. Don't, don't worry that, oh my goodness, it's going to come out really funny. That might be a little strong. That's a very strong color. But let me add a little to it. Just a little. Now you see how that changes the color. That changes the color quite a bit. It's not quite that, got a lot of water on that. Let's get rid of that. Add a little bit more. There's a big hole in that color. It's okay. It's half pan has is full of full of paint, so I'm not worried about a little gap in there. 
that's a little too bright. I know that I did not see trees, even that one's a little bright. I did not see trees that bright. So I'm going to muddy it down. And I'm going to take an actual, I'm going to take a red and muddy it down a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now I'm contaminating my red. Oh, that's a little too much. But let's see what that comes out as. You know, you think it's a lot. It's like, oh my goodness, look what I just did. I made it all muddy. But really, you may, you may find a tree with that color in it. In fact, I want to go a little more toward the browns because I did see some of that, you know, I saw some of that brown in there. There's some of that burgundy almost, making it a, a that's too red, making it a burgundy kind of color. The trick is to get it just right. You know, you're playing around with these things and sometimes you add just too much of something and it's not where you want it to be. Let me see. I'm just testing it out on this. That's a little bit... I don't know, that's not really red enough. I'm going to add some brown. Which is kind of cheating because, you know, I'm trying to brown it up a little. But some of these colors are... That's not bright enough blue. It has a little more blue in it. Let's try that. That's almost the same. I'm trying to get a, a deeper, almost like a... Almost like a blue-green color. Not quite a blue. That's too blue-green. So we don't want that, but more like this. Let's see if I can get some more water on there. These are going to be very watered down, of course. I didn't want to really do that, but... That's what I wound up doing. All right. I'm just, the goal is just to get like a lot of different colors that will remind me of the colors that I've seen on the trees. Now I want to work with some brownish colors and get some brownish in there uh, with the greens. So let me see if I can just kind of get a little bit of that in there. I'm running out of color here, so I'm going to add more and then get some of that in there. Some of them were quite dark though, that was the thing. So they had a little tinge of red to them. Ugh, I always do that with the red. The red is a very strong color of course. And here I am just slathering it on. Now I've got more of an olive green which is not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking more for a dirty, more like that. And, you know, sometimes they turn that color before they get to that really green stage. Now I've got a brown, an outright brown, but I did see some trees with a little bit of brown like that. I almost want some orange in there. I'm going to take some pure orange, lighten that up. Now I've got a quinacridone going on, <laughs> a kind of quinacridone color going on. I don't want that. I want a little more greenish blue to it. It's, it's kind of funny mixing these things, trying to get these the colors that you've seen. This is more what I'm looking at, looking at, I think. Let me test it on here before I go crazy completely. That's kind of more what I'm looking for. Look at the, that green I've made. See, so that's another one that I have seen. But I've also seen some more brownish. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to mix some of these in, some of these colors in with the browns. That's almost the same. Let me get a darker brown in there. That's a sepia, I believe. That's more like what I've seen. Like these really deep olive green type colors. But my, the main point of me doing this is to really give myself some kind of reference. So that when I want to paint later, I want to paint a scene later, I have something to go by. I'm not just trying to remember, oh yes, spring green is this color. It's not. There are all kinds of colors out there when the trees are starting to bloom and everything. I like that color. I wish I could get more of it. Now I have to remember what I used to get that. And I have to be very careful that I don't overdo it. But that was heavy on the reds and browns. Now that's, there's my clonacridone going again. I want to dumb that down a little bit. And I'm trying to remember what I used to dumb it down. 
Was it just like a regular green or a blue? That thumbs it down a little bit. But, I mean, I did see a lot of these colors on the trees. That's not red enough. See, a little more red in that. Not too red, though. See, that's more an orange. But there were oranges, too. I did actually see oranges. So, these are just giving me ideas for later on for colors that I may want to use in a spring palette. And that's all you want to do. You want to capture the moment. You know, capture a, a moment when things are just where you want them. Like, there were actually colors like that. Um, like a sunset. How fast does a sunset go by? I mean, it helps to take a picture of it. You can, you know, you've always got your camera with you. I mean, your phone with you. Take a picture of it so that you don't lose that color. You don't lose that moment. But it's also hard to capture if you're painting because if you're painting the same time the light is changing, your paint is going to look different. And you're not really going to capture 100% of what you're seeing because it's constantly getting darker and darker and you're getting different tones. You're getting more blues. You're getting more purples as the sun sets and you're getting less of the yellows and oranges. So it's going to affect the swatches that you get too. Just keep that in mind. But it's better to capture something than nothing. And then later you can go back and look at these as a reference. So now I want to capture some of these pinks. And you can see how when the buds are breaking, got one here, when the buds are breaking, they're more pinkish red. And as they open, there are little flecks of pink in them. This is where I would photograph it so I can remember how the pink shows on the, on the petals. So that's something where a photographic reference, reference really helps you. But also just to capture this color. Now, I'm going to see if I have a pink or a red that I can kind of steal a little from that will give me that color. Now, I hope I don't... Just a... Just... Oh, boy. That's real strong. This is Aquarius Red from the Roman Schmoll. I just want a little bit of color, like a little, little deeper than that. So let me get a little more water there. I'm going to steal some of this and see if I can get that over there. Not too dark, though. Let me see. That's one of the pink colors that I'm going to use. See that? It's oh, very faint, very faint. Let me get it a little bit darker. It seems like it's going to be too dark to me if I run that over. See, that seems too dark for me. But if I add a little water to it, maybe that's more like what I'm looking for. But you do have all these different subtleties in there. And this is, look, look at that, that's right out of the tube. Really what I should do is put a little bit of a different color in there. there there's a little bit of purplish in that as well. So I'm going to run this one in there too. Just a little dab of it. See, I just dabbed it a little. Just a little dab. You don't need a lot to change the color. Just change it slightly. Okay, I'm going to run that right there. See how that changed the color just a little bit? But I'm closer to some of these colors. Look how close that is. It's pretty close. And you do have the quite deep color. So I'm going to see if I can get some of this red and some of this. I hate doing, I really hate, I hate doing that. I don't like to contaminate my colors uh, like that, but sometimes you have to, and later on, uh, the OCD in me is going to go back, and you'll see if I use this palette again, it'll be totally clean. I'll take those colors off and swatch them and use them in some other project. I'll probably do a little, um, a little mixed media thing and get some of those colors out of the pans so that the pans are pure color again. But you can see, that's exaggerating of course, but you can see how I'm capturing these colors. Now there was one more I did see uh, that I don't have a sample of. It's quite a deep color, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of that going. I'm getting all kinds of leaves in my palette here, but that's okay. Quite a deep color. It was more of a purplish. In fact, I think I'm going to go toward the purple here. Get some of that in there. 
it was more purple but not and it was a deep color like this let's see that was kind of what it was a little more purple in fact I might even need to use a purple but it was a it was a nice beautiful cherry cherry red I, I don't know if it was a dogwood it was deeper than dogwood actually it wasn't quite a dogwood color but it was it was really really beautiful and intense so I'm going to do one of those two that's a little bit light but it'll remind me of the color and that's all I want to do is remind myself of the color and how intense it was. Let me see if I can get a little purple in there too. Just a little bit to change that slightly. Just want to change a little bit so it's not all red. That's a little too purple. That's a little too purple. I don't want that in there. Of course it's going to stain because that's a staining color but that's okay if I add more of the uh, less of that more of this and more of this. I can get that other color that I want that's a little deeper. Well, let's see, mix those all together. That's a little too dark. Let's see if I can use that. That's more like what I had in mind. Try that. That's more like what I had in mind. Okay, so it was a quite a deep color but not quite red. And this is all I wanted to do. So take your time when you have fleeting moments fleeting moments in nature uh, or you know even if you walk by a window in a city and you see a display or something you know it could be gone tomorrow get your camera out take a picture uh, if you can if it's something like a sunset that or uh, some other colors like like the changing colors of the seasons uh, even snow looks different in different lighting. So capture all the different colors and get them on paper somewhere. Have a reference that you can look at later. So now I have this reference and I can go back anytime I want to to paint the spring colors, the colors of spring. I wish you could smell this lilac. Um, it's almost in full bloom. It is a Miss Kim lilac, K-I-M, and it doesn't get very large and gangly like some other lilacs do, but it's got the most wonderful fragrance. And guess what? It's going to waft right into my studio once I get the studio built. Let's take a look at some of these butterflies. You might also be able to hear a little gurgling from the inlet of the pond here, which I will also hear when it rains. I thought I would also let you enjoy some of the blooms that have popped open since 
we had the rains. Well, they were open a little bit before, but now they'll really start to open up. See some buds waiting there. I wish I could take some time to do some watercolors of these, fill in my sketchbook a little bit, but I would rather go ahead and finish my studio build. That's more important right now. I'll put this off to the side and I will get that done. And then I have all the time, hopefully, to do some painting and watercolors and fun stuff. Look at all these raspberry blossoms, these wild raspberries, um, just covered and covered with blossoms. They might be smaller than the cultivated raspberries, but sometimes they're more flavorful, which I really enjoy. I, I'll, I'll be caught out here picking handfuls of them when they're ripe, if I can get to them before everybody else. What the heck is making all that commotion in the pond? Can you see? hope you can see that these are just tadpoles. Tons and tons of tadpoles. And I'll show you something else that's amazing. Let's sneak over here a little bit and I'll see if I can show you something without stepping. I've got to step very carefully here. So yesterday I wanted to get these frogs on video to show you. See at the very... See him? Okay. Now, I've gotten this frog. Yesterday I tried to show you, but the, it was too out of focus. Look at this tiny frog. You will not believe how small these things can be. And obviously this is just hatched. But I have to be careful where I walk here. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And I'm going to let him go because I don't want him to be... Now he doesn't want to go. He's happy there. <laughs> but I just wanted you to see how tiny. Look at that. Oh, there he goes. Well, as promised, I have been making progress on my studio. I've finally got the platform up with the help of my husband and the guys at the lumber store. Thank you so much, because we never do things by ourselves. We always need help. But I'm making progress. I'm getting there. So with the platform built, I lucked out because it rained yesterday and it's going to rain tomorrow. We need the rain desperately, but it gave me a window of time where I could put this up and finish it. And I have gotten the delivery of my next lumber for the walls. I'm going back to work on Thursday. I work three days this week and then I'm off for three days. So I'll start on the walls and continue to make progress on the studio. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you got some uh, information out of this swatching and had some fun along with me. Please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It does help my channel, and I will see you next time.